Dear friends, I'm very happy to be with you today, and I'm very happy that our MISCON match is taking place also online. Today, I would like to share with you some thoughts about constellations of gods in solid animation. Tales about gods, even so fantastic as ancient myths, were difficult to exist in solid atheistic culture, especially children's culture. An easy way to put gods in heaven was to emphasize presence of their names and on stars and planets. Thus, mythologies told in the USSR often allude to astronomical knowledge. This was the more popular as the 20th century was obsessed with space exploration on the both sides of the Iron Curtain. In this presentation, I would like to present shortly few animations that tell about ancient mythology and astronomy. Actually, the second and the third animation tell about it, and the first one only planned to have such illusion. Anyway, the first animation, uh, the first allusion to space in mythical animation which I know was planned to be realized in a film of Alexandra Snishkoblotska entitled Promito. In the penultimate version of the director's script, the finale included motive of space exploration, which was used to explain Prometheus' gift. Now what I would like to show you the finale that, that we know today. The scene was planned to depict famous buildings of the uh, uh, that humanity is proud of, drawn in a blaze of the fire. Such is a fragment of the script which was not realized. So in the palms of the young man and the girl, they are planned to be a temple of the sun, Zikurat, Parthenon, Light Hotel Alexandria, etc. And as the last building, there was a cosmodrome and then a scene of rocket at the launch and the spacecraft going into space. Thus, the spacecraft represents contemporary culture and is shown among architectural buildings. All of the buildings on the list, mostly temples, are high and reach into the sky. The design of the Eiffel Tower seems to be somewhat of a cross between a Gothic cathedral and a rocket launcher. The rocket going into space perfectly puts the end to the film. The idea was not approved as the scene started was planned to be started with the young couple going into the fire in order to keep the fire safe. And this image resembles obviously a self-immolation act. Act which was and is impossible to include in animation for kids. As Fyodor Hitruk stated in the discussion, the act of the self-immolation the ascent to the fire of the young man and the girl, which is probably associated as a political act, because we know it from the newspapers, seems to be an ambiguous. Apparently, he drew alludes here to famous self-immolation of young Palach on January 16, 1969 in Prague, as an act of protest of Soviet invasion of Czechoslovakia area LA. As a result, the film finishes with an image of the fire holden by the young man and the girl, as we have seen, without depicting any metaphors. As a result, the series Legends and Myths of Ancient Myths by Snyszka Blotska contains no allusions to constellations and space. The next film I would like to speak about is The Birth of Heracles by Julian Kalisze, made in 1982. This is a stop-motion animation with poems by Yuna Moritz. And now I would like to present a short fragment from the beginning of the film. В древней Греции, в древней Пеладе, мой друг, жили эллины древние греки. 
телескопа не зная, все звезды вокруг знали Эллины, древние ведьмы. Возле синих морей, среди гор и полей жили Эллины, древние греки, звездных птиц и животных, полов и людей в небе видели древние греки. The film starts with small lights on a black background. The lights transform into stars and form a finger of a lion, then of an eagle and a woman. And we see various plastic figures slowly moving on the background. In the next show, they form a zodiac circle. At the same time, the beginning of the poem is heard. In ancient Greece, in ancient Hellas, my friend, there lived Helens, ancient Greeks, without knowing the telescope. The ancient Greeks knew all the stars around them. By the blue seas, among the mountains and fields, the Helens, the ancient Greek, lived. Stellar birds and animals, gods and men, were seen in the sky by ancient Greeks. The sky was a picture book for them. The Greeks knew the alphabet of stars. We were born of unearthly stars on earth. Be the stars, the light in the native land, ancient Greeks sang, to their little ones. Thus, the hymn embraces knowledge of ancient Greeks who knew the alphabet of stars. The narration tells about what ancient Greeks saw or sing to their little ones. And this makes an introduction into the movie, preparing the viewer that the story will be one of such tales of ancients. At the same time, the poem includes atmosphere of praise in the name, which will be continued in the movie. Be the stars the light in the native land. The film presents the story of young Heracles. The main conflict is a struggle for influence and education of the boy between his mother, Alcmena, and Hera. You have seen the Hera in red dress, no? This is the fight about educating him as a human or as a god, giving preference to the human part. Hera is presented as an evil goddess who steals, who steals infant Heracles and takes him to heaven, or rather the outer space, to teach him to be a cruel god. There is no mention of Olympus in the film, and the world of gods is presented as a black space with stars, as we see. The colors of the film are very contrast. There will be whiteness and yellowness of earth and human world in a second, and blackness and redness of universe and gods. These colors are symbolic, and only partially are based on the reality. Hence in the story involving humans and gods is depicted as a story hold on Earth and in the space, where the universe acts as a metaphor for Olympus. Moving between the worlds is possible for gods and demigods, and they need no equipment for this. At some point, Heracles falls from heavenly cradle, and he is just moving down from black sky to earth, being rescued by a centaur in his fall, in this fall. On the other hand, Alcmene cannot go up to save her son. Hence, the film literally depicts metaphor about heaven, giving it cosmic interpretation. Gods and monsters are presented as constellations, especially those of zodiac. The poem emphasizes mixture between scientific knowledge of ancient Greeks and their tales. Such blender is presented in the film. The aim of this approach is to draw attention to astronomical knowledge and to tell and explain the myths in terms of a moral story. These rhythmic poems and plastic figures emphasize Iana Drissi of the film. The moral of the film is to be kind, peaceful, and human. The last verses of the poem resemble the famous hymn to the human by Sophocles. Памятных времен говорит мой чудный звон, древняя лада, что у звезд глаза людей, матерей, отцов, детей, древняя лада. Слушай сказку, слушай в пыли, человек не прав, не пыль. Древняя лада, был и будет он звездой, а сейчас он твой герой, древняя лада.
Он сильней твоих богов, он побьет твоих врагов, древний лад, чудеса он сотворит, небеса он отдарит, древний лад. From times unseen, my beautiful giant sings of ancient Hellas, that the stars have the eyes of men, of mothers, of fathers, of children, ancient Hellas. Listen to the tale, listen to the story. Man is not ashes, he is not dust, ancient Hellas. He was and will be a star, and now he is your hero, ancient Hellas. He is stronger than your gods, he will beat your enemies, ancient Hellas. He will do wonders. He will light up the heavens, ancient Hellas. Thus the film not only gives a theistic interpretation of ancient mythology, it proclaims victory of humans over gods. The most connected with astronomy and space exploration film is Phaeton, The Son of the Sun by Vasily Ivanov, made in 1972. It is a part of a series great mysteries of the universe. The film is made as a drawn animation and its plot unfolds as a story within a story. The film starts with a lecture in a planetarium where an ancient mystery known from the 17th century is discussed. He tells Baudet law about spacing between the planets and the solar system is presented. And according to this law, a hypothesis about a missing planet between Mars and Jupiter is described, giving attention to an asteroid belt. Afterwards, a presenter announced starts of a space expedition long awaited by the humanity, and a transmission from a spaceport begins. Astronomers speak about their mission to find out if the asteroids are not part of a destroyed planet. Being asked about the name of the spacecraft Phaeton, they tell about a myth known by ancient Egyptians and Greek, originating perhaps by legendary Atlantis. Afterwards, the story of Phaeton is shown as a separate film in a film which has its own title, Phaeton the Son of Sun, Film Hypothesis. This fragment differs from the rest of the film in style of drawing and narrating. The music changes, the language is poetic, the pictures differ in style and colors. The background is black, similar to the Kalisher movie. Most of the film shows right of the chariot with intense music without word narration. The film hypothesis starts with a prayer of a young man, Phaeton, to his father Helios, looking like a sculpture of a sitting Egyptian imperator. The son asks Helios to ride his father's son, son chariot once. Contrary to Ovid, Phaeton is not looking for confirmation from Helios that he is his son. No Helios warns of weakness of the mortal young man. It seems that the young man just wants to experience riding the great chariot. The aspect of divinity is, uh, or mortality is omitted. The father acts rather like Daedalus, appearing to his son, appealing to his son to be moderate and to keep his way. Then the ride starts with beautiful pictures of colorful horses on the black background. At some point, we see horses scared by lion of the Leo constellation and Phaeton losing his reins. Hence, in this film also, we see animated constellations where groups of stars look like their names supposed. As a result, the chariot is approaching the Earth and fire starting to destroy the planet. The film finishes with prayer to Gaia to do to save what is left. Zeus kills Phaeton with his lightning, and the youth falls from the chariot. Afterwards, the narration 
returns to the space mission Phaeton 1. The astronomers believe in existence of the planet inhabited by high civilization which visited Earth in ancient times and discussed the reason of this destruction. The movie of Phaeton was quite popular in the 20th century and was often in literature and audiovisual art. The problem was also of interest of science to scientists. However, the film of Livanov preceded the real-life missions. The Soviet missions to Ceres, Soviet Vesta mission, were planned since the 1980s and have never been fulfilled. The first space, space mission to Ceres, a space probe down, was launched by NASA only in 2007. Its first images received in 2015. In the 1920s, another mission for Ceres is planned by the Chinese Space Agency. So the film has its actuality even now. Also, the theory about the existence of the planet is considered flawed. Thus, in the film, the main motive of the ancient myth is presented according to Ovid's version. The story is separated from the rest of the film and has a separate title. The whole cartoon is made in a style. The whole cartoon is made in a style of popular science story which uses myths as a source for contemporary researchers and explores knowledge of ancient civilizations preserved in texts of antiquity. The ancient myth is shown as a story that should be read metaphorically or symbolically and preserves only partial information about scientific facts. The connection between mythology and astronomical knowledge in the films is only partial. It seems that the birth of Heracles uses astronomy only as a bridge between modern world and mythology, and the story aims to depict the myth itself. Allusions to the stars or constellations are present in the beginning and the end of the film, serving as a frame for the narrative. The main accent is put uh, on the myth of Heracles. However, the Greek hero doesn't act as a constellation, although his place among gods is mentioned in the film. Maybe his way to heavens was planned to be performed in the next films of the series, which never have been created. On the other hand, Phaeton, the son of Sun, is focused on presenting astronomical information, and the Greek myth acts here only as one of hypotheses. The myth is separated from other parts of the film and even has its own subtitle. Thus, its distance from contemporary or the future world is emphasized. It's interesting that both the films are focused on problems of growing up and relations between parents and children. An infant Heracles, an infant Heracles being torn between two caretakers and Phaeton not coping well with the responsibility entrusted to him and failing his mother's trust. In both cases, parents as well as children are trying to do what is good and are positive characters. Some external circumstances prevent them from doing so, and in both cases, these circumstances are represented by the constellations, the lion and the Virgo, and in the last variant, also goddess, Hera. Thank you very much for your attention, and sorry for snoring of my dog. Thank you.